Okay, in this video we're checking out the new Foxier Cat Starlight FPV camera. This one here only comes in this full size, which is a 28 by 28 size. It's a full size camera with the M12 lens. Um, I think that the mini and micro versions are probably coming out later, but I'm not so sure about that. Um, as you can see here, it's a Starlight camera, so it's supposed to be for uh, very low light conditions. I see a minimum of 0 0.0001 lux, and that'll be in black and white. I think if um, you want to see this in color and low light, I think it's got to have a minimum uh, light rating of 0 0.005 lux. Um, for the most part, I found that it stays in color if there's any kind of ambient light, uh, but if you are in really pitch black conditions, then it will switch to black and white. Uh, and it has the lowest um, amount of noise of all of these low light cameras. Definitely less noise than the Eagle or the Rattel. So this is um, definitely going to be better for your uh, super low light conditions or nighttime conditions compared to the Rattel or the Eagle. Um, but it also has a pretty nice uh, daytime color image and um, it kind of reminds me a lot of the Foxier Falcor. I think that's kind of what it's based on. So it is a um, 1 over 3 inch sensor, so it's a 1 3rd inch sensor, smaller than what's on the Rattel or the Eagle. It is a 1200 TV line sensor. It's a native 16.9 sensor, but it is switchable from 4.3 to 16.9. Just in 4.3 mode, it cuts off the left and right sides of the image, and it is also NTSC and PAL switchable. It does have a built-in OSD. Um, you can control your camera settings via the uh, little joystick controller board, and I'll actually just show you all that stuff here. So you get your wiring looms here. Uh, those are included for the camera connections. You get a mount if you want to use that, and then you get your controller uh, board for changing the settings, and then you also get mounting screws and washers to mount to your frame. So that's everything that comes with it. Um, yeah, it does have a voltage sensor line here as well, so it does show you OSD as well as uh, pilot name and uh, power on time if you want to use that. Otherwise, these connections are pretty uh, typical. Um, you get your voltage in, and the voltage range is 5 to 40 volts. That's pretty normal. And uh, ground and video. And then yeah, one, one thing I forgot to mention is the lens here is a 2.1 millimeter lens. Uh, I think that's the only one that is available. Um, it is a CMOS sensor, and it does come in three different colors, red, uh, black, and white. Okay, so I got the camera plugged in here, and I just want to show you a quick uh, look at the settings in the menu. And it's uh, pretty typical of a lot of the other FPV cameras out there. You can adjust these settings here. These are the settings that I've used, um, which uh, for some reason isn't the stock settings. They they, they actually recommended increasing the, uh, I believe it was the brightness, uh, from the stock that I got. I think that's going to be the stock on the shipping versions, but I'm using a sharpness of 6, color green of 15. Under automatic white balance, I'm using auto, and under exposure, I'm using a brightness setting of 11. I believe they recommended 10, but I thought that was still a bit too dark, so I actually I bumped it up to 11, and shutter is auto, AGC is 10. Yeah, so these are the settings I'm using for the video samples you're going to see at the end. Now under the uh, day-night settings, uh, for the most part I left it in the color mode, you can also switch it to black and white mode. And this is going to be, this is what I would recommend if you're going to be in extremely dark conditions instead of having you try and switch back and forth. Um, this is going to give you a better result in extremely dark conditions. Um, but you can also go into the auto mode where it will switch back and forth between color and auto or color and black and white based on the settings here. You'll have to kind of play around with those to see which ones work for you. But I found that uh, I didn't really like the way it would switch back and forth. It was even though you set the delay to low, it just didn't. I didn't really, uh, didn't really feel that it worked so great. So I would recommend either sticking to color or black and white, depending upon the lighting conditions you have. Okay, so here under the system menu, you can turn the cam title on and off. I turned that off as well as the voltage and the timer. It's typical Fox here OSD on the bottom, but I used the Betaflight OSD, so I turned all of these off. And then also here in this menu, you can uh, switch from NTC and PAL and 16.9 versus 4.3 mode. And that's it for uh, pretty much it for all the settings and the camera that you can adjust. Go ahead and show you some uh, flight footage. I have uh, flight footage in various lighting conditions, some sort of cloudy, um, sort of late afternoon, and also 
in the evening as well. And uh, yeah, for the most part, I think that if you're going to be flying under extremely dark conditions, I would recommend just uh, switching it to black and white, and then you'll get a better overall image. And even in very low light conditions where there's a little bit of ambient light, say a parking lot, it'll look pretty good with very low noise levels in, in those kind of lighting conditions. I think this was out of, out of all the low light cameras, this has probably the lowest amount of video noise compared to some of the others on one of the other video cameras out there. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and here's some, I'll roll so much of sample footage for you guys and uh, let me know if you have any questions and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.